Hello, let's now have a look at the Boolean logic topic over the next three videos. So Boolean is one of our data types. It is where we've got values which are either true or false. And a Boolean expression is an expression which evaluates to either true or false. The word evaluate in this context just means outputting or leading to. And an expression is a combination of values and operations which does something. So this does relate to programming. It hasn't been put in paper two by mistake because we use Boolean expressions all the time in programming. So with conditions and if statements and while loops, we use these Boolean expressions. So here is an if statement. The whole thing isn't a Boolean expression, but we've got a Boolean expression within it. So with if statements, as you should hopefully know, we need our condition to be Boolean for it to work. So this whole thing is an example of a Boolean expression because it's either going to be true or false. But within it, I've also got another two Boolean expressions because to the left of the AND operation, I've got a Boolean expression. Age can either be greater than or equal to 17 or not greater than and equal to 17. Likewise, has car, assuming has car is a Boolean variable, is either going to be true or false. So therefore, these are both Boolean expressions as well. Now, to be honest, that's the last time you're going to see program code in this Boolean logic topic, because we always simplify code like this into simpler expressions. So I could package this left hand side expression under a variable A and A could be representing age is bigger than or equal to 17. I can package this right hand side into another variable B and suddenly it becomes a lot simpler to look at. I've got A and B is equal to Q. Well, what's Q? Well, Q is what the whole thing evaluates to, which must be R bigger total condition here. The reason we simplify expressions is so that we can understand problems better. Some expressions can be really quite complicated. You might have multiple different things going on. It's simpler to look at it with just letters. And also at A level, there are some clever things we can do to make these expressions a little bit shorter. Another important concept to talk about early on is a truth table. This sounds similar to a trace table, which you covered earlier in the course, but there are two different things. A truth table is a method of representing every possible output based on the inputs to a Boolean expression. So in this simplified version in purple, A and B are the two possible inputs. They can either be one or zero each, and Q is the possible output, can either be one or zero. And the truth table is showing all the possible inputs versus the possible outputs. So we are cycling through all the different possibilities I could have. Both A and B could both be false. A could be false, B could be true, and so on and so on. These are all the different possible combinations and then the corresponding outputs from these combinations. Now, this truth table is using F for false and T for true. However, a lot of the time, in fact, most of the time, we use one and zero instead, with one being for true and zero being for false. They are equivalent. You'll generally see binary being used. And that's partly why we use Boolean values is that it connects really easily to binary. It's really simple. We can use what we have already to represent these different values. So what's a logic gate? Well, a logic gate is just a circuit which implements a Boolean operation. We've looked at the three Boolean operations already in the context of programming, and, or, and not. And for everything we use in code, our CPU needs to be able to carry out that instruction. So if I'm using an and operation in my Python code, my ALU in my CPU needs to have a circuit which can carry out the and operation. That is what a logic gate is. So we draw these as computer scientists using symbols, but they're really representing an underlying circuit. So we've got these three operations and three symbols we'll look at one by one. We draw these symbols in the same way that in physics, you will draw a light bulb symbol as opposed to drawing actually a picture of a light bulb. So the not operation is also called negation. That's a fancy word for not. Not is our simplest, not has one input, and it simply reverses it to give the output. So reverses meaning the opposite. So we could write it as not A is equal to Q. Our truth table simply flips the input. So if zero is input to a not gate, one is output. If one is input, zero gets output. It just reverses whatever the input is. And this is our not gate symbol as a triangle and a circle, both are part of it. We've got one input coming in and one output leaving. The lines are representing wires. The OR operation is also called disjunction. And the disjunction operation returns true if either of the inputs are true or both of the inputs are true. So in other words, it only returns false if both inputs are false. 
And because I've got two inputs here, which we can use A and B to represent, my truth table is bigger because I've got more combinations. Now we'll look at how we can complete truth tables properly in a separate video, but we can see in this truth table that the output Q is always one unless both inputs are zero. So or is very forgiving, only one of our inputs needs to be true for the whole thing to be true. And this is our symbol, sort of like a crescent moon is how I describe it, but a curved left-hand side and it kind of goes into a point at the end, that's the symbol. The final operation to look at at GCSE at least is AND, AND is also called conjunction. So it's OR, which is disjunction, AND, which is conjunction. It might help you in memorizing this if you realize that CON is a, a Latin word meaning together, and AND needs both sides together to be true for the whole thing to be true. So it only returns true if both inputs are true, otherwise the result is false. So AND is a lot stricter than OR, it needs both of those inputs to together being one for the whole thing to be one. And the logic gate itself is not too different to an OR gate, but it has a flat left-hand side, more like a semicircle. So we're gonna have a look at how we can combine these three logic gates together to build more complex circuits and to complete more complex truth tables.